Hello everyone, I'm the Lexus 623 here's another video for me. So today, once again, we are going to be talking about Harry Potter, because it's Harry Potter month. Um, today we are going to be talking about the second film, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So... Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is the second film. Um, it is the character's second year, and also it introduces a few new characters. Um, but before we get into the characters, let's talk about the plot. So I'm going to try and make this video a lot shorter than the last Harry Potter month video, so I'm probably going to be talking a little bit less. So let's just get right into the plot synopsis of this thing, shall we? After a long summer with the horrid Dursleys, Harry Potter is thwarted in his attempts to board the train to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry to begin his second year. Harry's only transportation option is a magical flying car, but unfortunately it crashes into a valuable whomping willow. Still, all this seems like a day in the park compared to what awaits Harry that fall within the haunted halls of Hogwarts. Chilling, malevolent voices whisper from the walls, only to Harry, and it seems certain that his classmate Draco Malfoy is out to get him. Um, so Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is kind of a mystery sort of movie. Um, basically, the whole plot, I guess, is the characters are trying to um, find the Chamber of Secrets and find out who opened it. Um, so, I'm... Um, the plot of this one is kind of simple, and this this film also introduces quite a few new characters. Um, so, let's talk about these characters, shall we? Alrighty, so first we have these students. So, I already talked about Harry, Ron, and... Hermione, but so I'm just going to talk about some of the new, some of the other students. So first we're going to talk about um, Moaning Myrtle, the ghost that was killed by the basilisk. Um, she's basically a ghost that's in the boys' bathroom and or, I don't think it's the boys' bathroom, but it's one of the bathrooms. Um, she basically just lives there and also seems to be very infatuated, I guess would be the way to put it, with Harry. Um, so, basically, she is just a ghost, um, and her whole thing is that she just is like always sad I guess and like a bunch of the kids throw books at her I guess so next I'm gonna talk about Tom Riddle um, technically he is a character so Tom Riddle in case you didn't know is the Dark Lord Voldemort as his younger self and we get to see his younger self because it's it lives through his diary, which we find out later is a horcrux, and that's why his soul 
survived within it. And it's very strange, I guess. And just is very complicated to explain. You should probably watch the movies to understand. Um, but yeah, Tom Riddle, in case you didn't know, is the person who first opened the Chamber of Secrets. And he's also he also used his diary to get someone else to open open the Chamber of Secrets this time. And he convinced Ginny Weasley to do this. Speaking of, let's talk about Ginny Weasley. She is introduced in this film. Um, she is Ron's young sister who, um, I don't think even was around in the f in the first film. Like she existed, but she wasn't really shown at all. Um, but yeah, basically, she is a first year in this film, and the thing with her is, Tom, she gets a hold of Tom Riddle's diary, and basically she gets controlled to open the Chamber of Secrets and let the Basilisk loose, and it petrifies a bunch of characters. Um... So, next, let's talk about another character who's not very important, but I'm just going to talk about him for a short bit. Um, Colin is another first year, and he basically just follows around with a camera. And him having that camera is the only reason that the Basilisk didn't kill him, um, because he was seeing it through the camera lens, trying to take a picture of it, because he literally... If he's there, he takes a picture of something. Just about every scene he's in, he's he has his camera and is taking a picture. Um, so, I'm just going to talk about Neville Longbottom as well, a little bit. Basically, in this, again, he is pretty much just the poor kid that is basically a running joke. Um... But he's not treated as bad in the later films. I think it's just these two. So in this one, in the herbology class scene, he um, ends up fainting by hear because he hears a mandrake's cry. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Neville when I get to, um, the Goblet of Fire, which, it's not the, which, I don't think that one's the worst, but it does have a few mistakes that I kind of noticed. Um, so anyway, uh, that's all the students that I'm going to talk about, so let's get into the teachers. Alright, so I don't really have very much to talk about with teachers, but I do have a small little note to say. Um, so, Albus Dumbledore is played by Richard Harris in this film. And this movie is the last one to have him. Um, in the later films, he is played by Michael Gambon. Um, and I believe he's played by Michael Gambon the whole way through. Um, so yeah, let's... So first is Gildroy Lockhart. Basically, Gildroy, as we find out later in the film, basically took credit for other wizards' deeds and then obliviated them. Um, which this is the first instance of the Obliviate spell being used, but it kind of comes back and but the spell kind of becomes relevant again in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which hopefully I will review. Um, 
So Gilderoy Lockhart is probably the worst defense against the dark arts teacher, aside from, of course, Dolores Umbridge. Um, because Gilderoy Lockhart is just so dumb. He doesn't really know anything about defense against the dark arts. And when he is supposed to save the day, he basically just tries to leave, but... Then Ron and Harry pretty much hold him hostage so that he doesn't leave. Um, so next, I'm just gonna really quick talk about Professor Flitwick, who I didn't in the last one. Professor Flitwick is played by Warwick Davis, who I guess would be most known for Leprechaun. Um, that's one of the things he's most known for. Um, Flitwick actually looks completely different in this film than he did in the first one. In the first one, he was, he was the teacher that taught Wingardium Leviosa to the students, and he had a long beard and gray hair and stuff. In this film, however, Professor Flitwick is just got brown hair and a mustache and that is the look that carries on through the rest of the film um so Severus Snape once again is he doesn't play as much as of a role in this one as he did in the first one but he's still kind of important um, of course, he is Potion's teacher still, and really wants Defense Against the Dark Arts. Um, but he does become a lot more important in the future. Alright, so that's all I've got for teachers. Um, oh, also Professor Sprout is the Herbology teacher. Uh, I don't really have much to say about her. Um, so next, let's talk about the other characters. So once again, the Dursleys show up. Um, they are jerks as usual. Um, if you want me to talk more about them, look at the first review. But there's also some more characters that I have to talk about. There's also Arthur Weasley, who has, in my opinion, one of the funniest lines in the entire Harry Potter franchise. When he is talking to Harry about muggle technology and asks him, what exactly is the function of a rubber duck? That is, in my opinion, the most hilarious line in any of these movies. Um, so yeah, Arthur Weasley works for the Ministry of Magic, and um, he is also the obsessed with muggle technology. He has sort of an infatuation with it. I guess would be the way to put it. Um, so next is Lucius Malfoy. Now Lucius Malfoy, we find out later, is a Death Eater. But even in this one, he's kind of an unsavory character because of the fact that he's, well, you know, Draco Malfoy's father. Um, he's played by Jason Isaacs, and I don't really have much to say about him. I haven't really seen him in much else, but he is a very villainous character in this. Um, so next is Aragog, voiced by Julian Glover. Aragog is a giant spider. Hold up, let me look up the exact species that Aragog is. Um, 
Aragog is an Acromantula. That that's it. Okay. And he basically is only really relevant in this film. Um because he almost straight up murders Harry and Ron by sending his spiders after them. Because his spiders his children, I guess, are hungry. Um Basically his loyalties only lie with Hagrid and also he is believed to be the creature that petrifies everyone in a flashback. Um even though it wasn't an acromantula, it was actually a basilisk. Um so, next, let's talk about the last character. Dobby the House Elf, voiced by Toby Jones. Now, Toby Jones, I have actually seen in quite a few things. He was in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and the first Captain America. Um... Toby Jones is has been in quite a few films. Um, so he plays, well, he voices Dobby the House Elf. And Dobby is the House Elf for Lucius Malfoy. And I think he either gets, yeah, he gets freed in this one when Harry gives Lucius the diary and it has a sock in it but then Lucius just gives it to Dobby and then Dobby is free because technically he was given a piece of clothes by his master um so Dobby the house elf is basically does everything in his power to not let Harry go to Hogwarts because it's too dangerous in his opinion um, but of course, Harry ends up going to Hogwarts because we wouldn't really have a movie if he didn't. Um, Dobby the House Elf is a very, I guess I'd say, insecure character. He, um, well, actually, he's more of a sad character because he, um, his masters, the Malfoys, are really nasty people, and um, whenever he does something in his eyes that's bad, he punishes himself by hitting his head against something, which Harry obviously is like, what the heck are you doing? Stop it. So anyway, that is my uh, thoughts on the characters. So let's move on to my um, closing thoughts. Alrighty, so this video has probably gone on for long enough, so I'm just going to try and make this short. So, this isn't the best movie. It is. It has a lighthearted tone that's carried through the first three films. Not as much in the third film, but we'll get to that one when we get to it. Um, and this one was also directed by Chris Columbus. Um... He directed the first one, the second one, and I think that's it. I think that's all of the Harry Potter films he directed. Oh, wait. The... Yeah, it was just the first and second one. Um... So, this one... The plots kind of cluttered together at certain points. Um, of course, I do like the fact that this one keeps a lighthearted tone because it's not gotten as dark as some of the later movies have. Um, so, yeah. That's 
basically it for my review, so I guess that's the last Harry Potter month video. And this is the Lexus 63, signing off. Lex, you need to stop making such long reviews for Harry Potter month, it just makes more work for me. And as you know, I don't get paid considering I'm your clone, so you need to make shorter videos. I know, I'm trying with this one, um, what do you want me to do? Say less about the films? I'm a film critic, I have to talk in depth about these movies. Well, your next one had better be a lot less in depth. Or I am going to stop editing your videos. Okay, I'll try and shorten it up so you don't have as much work. Okay, is that fine with you? Okay, but if your next review isn't short enough, then you're going to be fired. Okay? Jeez, oh, I didn't have this problem with season one or season two legs. Alright, unless I want to be fired, then I guess I have to make my next video shorter. Uh, so, this is Alexa 63, signing off. Alright. Well, I told him what you told me to tell him. Okay, so... If he makes another long 20 minute video, he's fired, right? Yes, that's the deal. And then, when he's fired, I will get his job. <laughs> mm. <laughs>